Alrighty, so if you notice on your screen, um, there is a tutorial card. And these are the tutorial cards that were mentioned earlier that will be available to you soon along with these recordings that you can re refer to at a later date if you need to review them again. Additionally, we had another uh, course called Google Classroom for Families that if there is some information that we may not have touched on today, you can also refer to that webinar or those YouTube videos um, to get gain more um, information about Google Classroom along with this uh, webinar today, uh, Google Tools for Families. Do we have any questions yet so far? Do you see anything in the chat? I don't think so. So I think we're good to go to move on to Google Docs. So Google Docs. Google Docs is similar to um, Google Microsoft Word. A lot of us may have experience with Microsoft Word. Well, Google Docs is pretty similar to that. So I'm gonna review with you first on how to access um, Google Docs. And the first thing you need to do is you need to have access to um, Google, have a Google account or something. Um, your student already has this because they utilize Google Classroom or Google um, Workspace. So what you will do is you will click on the uh, waffle in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And if you notice, there are several options here that you can use. These are tons of applications. This is just a small portion of them that's available in Google Workspace. But we're going to start with Google Docs. So we're going to click on Google Docs any new screen is going to open up. And if you notice, we have many templates that are already available to use, but for today's purpose, we're gonna use a blank page. So what I will do is I will click on this plus sign, this multicolor plus sign, and again, another page is going to open up and we have a blank screen. And we have already opened up our first Google Doc. I'm gonna switch the page here for a second because I've actually already started um, a document. But that's how we get into a new document. So here's the document that we're going to review today. So if you notice at the very top, we have many ways that we can utilize Google Docs. And we have this toolbar that is located at the very top. And if you scroll over each one of these icons or images, it will actually display for you that this will bold, this will italicize your font, this inserts a link, this attaches an image, and we're going to go over some of these today. Not only are these um, choices available on this toolbar, you can also use these drop down menus up here at the top to do the same thing. So it's kind of a redundant uh, tool. So you can use the toolbar or you can use the options up here at top. All right, so let's first name our document. So obviously we need to give all of our documents a name and to name our document, all we need to do is click up here where it says untitled document. And I've already pre um, typed in our title, school is fun because we all know school is absolutely fabulous and fun, right? So now we have saved our document and we have titled it. But is, what is really unique about Google is it automatically saves. So you can't really lose your work um, in uh, Google unless maybe you have an internet glitch or something, but generally it's constantly saving your work all the time. So you don't have to click that save button in um, Google. All right, so now let's take a look at the page. So if we look at this page, I already have a paragraph here. This is generally what students might do with a Google Doc. They probably will write it on paper, research paper, maybe do something for science, do some research, maybe um, type something up for their language arts class, social studies, et cetera. So there's usually a format that they need to set the paper up within. Well, if you notice here, I already have titled our page, but the title of the page is not in the right spot. And we can move that title around. So it's a real simple step to do that. So let's go up to our toolbar, and I'm gonna go over to right here where it says alignment. And I'm going to click on the little arrow. And if you notice, I can align it to the left. I can center it just like I normally do for a paper. I can justify it or align it to the right or justify it again back to the other side. But I want to center this. OK, 
Okay, so super easy um, that we can align our title. We can do the same thing with our paragraphs. If I highlight the whole paragraph, I can go in and center the whole thing if I choose. I can align it to the right, or I can justify it even on both sides. Generally, what we like to have it to the left. But a little known secret a lot of students don't know about, remember how we have to indent all of our paragraphs? Do you remember your ELA teacher, your language arts teacher saying, make sure you indent your paragraphs? I have an ELA background, so I'm very famous for saying that. Oh, yeah, so, Stephanie, and I remember all the red ink, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They don't have so much red ink now. Google <laughs> does that for us, if you notice, on the page. They do the red ink for us. So, <laughs> so um, there's a built-in tab for indenting in Google Docs. And all you have to do is place your cursor at the beginning of the paragraph, press the tab key one time, and it indents that paragraph, those five spaces that um, indenting is famous for. It's not necessary to, to press that space bar. Okay, because when we do that, it kind of makes all the paragraphs uneven if we do that. So let's go back, press the tab key, and there you go, it's indented. But what if I still don't like where it's at? What's really cool about Google Docs is that we have a redo and an undo button up here at the upper left-hand corner of the toolbar. And if you notice, if I click undo, it takes it back to where it originally was. If I click redo, it puts it back to where I um, would like to have it. So a lot of times we make mistakes. We like to use this undo and this redo button. All right, so because as Danny mentioned, that red ink, well, even though we're, <laughs> even though that we, um, we still like to make comments and stuff with um, um, the papers, even though it's in a digital format, we still like to have our uh, paragraphs double space. So let's learn how to do that. So what I will do is highlight the paragraph. Maybe I have the whole document typed up. I highlight the whole document. I'm gonna go back up here to our toolbar. Now on my toolbar, it does not have the spacing on here but I can expand my toolbar by utilizing, clicking on these three dots. And it's gonna give me a few more options. So if you notice the arrow that's pointed up and down, this is gonna be our line spacing. I'm gonna click on this and we have several choices. We can do one and a half. I don't like one and a half because I'm an ELI teacher, I like double spacing. Um, now we have a double space document. Perfect. Okay, so now we formatted our paragraph. Okay, we've looked at spacing. Now look at the errors. So if you notice, there's a couple of that, those red lines. That means there's something going on and you probably should check it. So if you hover over that red little line there, it's actually gonna suggest to you that it looks like this is um, the word since is not being used in context correctly. So it's suggesting the correct way to use since. And we can click on that and it'll change it for us. And the infamous letter I, this is the fault of texting these days. So we like to have our letter I's capitalized still. So if I hover over that, it's actually going to tell me I need to capitalize that. If I click on it, it corrects it for me. So make sure your students, if you are assisting them maybe in reviewing some of their work and they have a lot of these red, maybe blue, which um, stands for grammar, um, they're not using their grammar correctly, maybe punctuation is wrong, they're missing a comma or something, then they probably need to take a look at um, the suggestions. Another way that um, suggestions can be utilized is comments within the documents. And this is a great tool for teachers and even um, peer evaluations or student to student interaction. They can make this document interactive. So the way to do that is I can come up here and maybe highlight a word. And if you notice, I have a plus sign and I have a suggest edits. What well, if I click on this plus sign, it says add comment. And now let me move my page over, I can add a comment. Okay, I click comment. And now when the student goes into their paper, they're going to see my comment. And they can actually respond to the teacher's comments if they click on the comment. And if you notice, a new comment box does open up. 
So this is a great way for students to interact with one another or teachers to interact with students or students to interact with teachers. Maybe they have a question um, about a worksheet that's been made by a teacher in Google, comment, uh, in Google Docs. They can comment on teacher's papers too, okay? It's not just the teacher commenting on the student. All right, so sometimes a student may need to insert an image into a document. So again, super simple. We're going to go back up here to our toolbar. And if you notice, we have insert an image right here. And I'm going to, um, you can either search the web. You can utilize photos from their Google Drive. Maybe they have an uh, uh, image on their computer. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my images, see what we have here. I know I have something in here I can include. Here we go. So now I've inserted an image into our document, but the image is really big and it's kind of messed up my paragraph a little bit, it looks a little off. So it's super easy to resize it. So I'm going to click on the image and if you notice a blue box around the image and I can adjust it by maybe grabbing onto the side, but that kind of distorts the image and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna go back up here to that undo button and restore the image to what it originally was. And it's best to take the image from the corner, click on it, and then drag it to the size that we want. But if you notice at the bottom of the image, there's additional choices here. Well, we want the image to be incorporated with it within our text. So I'm going to click wrap text. And so now the image is incorporated within my text. Um, if I don't like that, again, I can click the undo button. Uh, I'm going to change my mind again. I'm going to go back to the redo button. So it's super simple to incorporate an image within um, the uh, text in Google Docs. Okay, one last thing I'm going to kind of go over with you is edit history. So another way to make this document interactive between students, parents, and teachers is you can go in and see what has been edited or the edit history. So if I click on this last edit history, I'm going to notice a new screen opens up and it tells me every time that I have edited this document. If I click on something particular here, it's going to take me back to this doc, um, to this version or I click on this one, it's going to take me back to the um, version that I'm working in. So this is a great tool that teachers can use to see what edits have been made, um, how the student has been progressing, um, see how long they've been working, and the same thing for um, parents and families too. You can utilize this tool to see um, your student's progress. To get out of this version or this um, edit history, I'm going to click on this back arrow, arrow in the upper left hand corner. And it's going to take me back to my original page. Now, the last thing I wanted to review with you in Google Docs is that famous explore button that I was talking about earlier. It's this little inconspicuous little um, image down here at the um, bottom right hand corner. If I click on this explore button, a um, new screen will open up on the right hand side of the page. Now, this is an awesome tool, especially for um, students who are doing research or they need to incorporate images, et cetera, within their doc, they can use this um, search tool to search for their document. So I'm gonna go ahead and search school, this one. And if you notice, I have three options. I can utilize the web. Maybe I will utilize the web to find research, um, scholarly research to incorporate into my, um, my um, essay that I'm writing. Maybe I want to find an image, or I can actually go to my drive and incorporate um, information from my drive into my document. document. But I'm going to incorporate an image. So I'm going to click on this school is fun. And if you notice, it has um, exploded the image for me on the page, opened up a new page. And if I just click the insert button at the upper center of the page, it automatically inserts to my Google Doc. Super simple, right? So as we did earlier, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna resize my image, make it a little bit smaller. 
And then if I want to incorporate into my text, I can use that wrap text feature again on the bottom of the page. So as you can see, I know I reviewed a ton of information in Google Docs. Does anybody have any questions at this time about Google Docs? I know it's a lot of information. Let's see what we got going on in the chat. Yeah, we, we do have questions. Okay, um, I see. We have, does my te child's teacher automatically get a copy of all the work? Um, yes and no. And I think this is a really good question. So in Google Classroom, um, if your teacher assigns a Google Doc to your student, they will automatically get a copy of this document this Google Doc. However, if your student creates the document on their own and then they need to submit to the teacher, then they need to share it with their teacher or with a parent, whoever they need to share this um, document with. Maybe it's another student. Maybe they're working on group work. And it's really simple to do that. So all I need to do is go up to the share button and Say I want to share my work with Mr. Maddox, Mr. Danny Maddox, and I'll type in the search bar for his name for his email. And if you notice, it pops up, and then I can click send, and I have shared this uh, Google Doc with um, either a teacher, instructor, or another family member. Um, super easy to do and super quick.